بيان حكم القتال الذي حصل بين الإمام علي ومعاوية وأن معاوية ومن معه بغوا Clarification of the judgment of the fighting that took place between Imam Ali and Muawiyah and that Muawiyah and those who were with him mutinied Qala Allah Ta'ala said Allah exalted is he Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu ati'u Allah wa ati'u Rasul wa uli al-amri minkum O those who have believed obey Allah and obey the messenger and those in charge of your affair among you the caliphs even if the caliph is a major sinner if he's not commanding you with a sin then you obey him that's the 59th ayah of surah an-nisa wa rawa muslim fi sahihihi an abi hurairah an nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam annahu qala and Muslim narrated in his authentic book from the route of Abu Hurairah from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he said Man kharaja min al-ta'ah wa faraq al-jama'ah famat mata mitatan jahiliyah Anyone who departs the obedience who withdraws the obedience that means his allegiance to the caliph he withdraws his allegiance to the caliph and he departs the main body of muslims and then he dies like that then he died an era of ignorance death and he died in a very bad state. Wafihi ayda. And therein also, in Muslims' authentic book, Annahu jaa Abdullah ibn Umar ila Abdullah ibn Mutiyah. He na kana min amri al-harrat ma kan. Zaman yazid ibn Muawiyah. That Abdullah bin Umar went to Abdullah bin Muti' during the tribulations of Al Harra at the time of Yazid ibn Muawiyah. That was some war that took place. Uh, In Medina. At the time of Yazid ibn Muawiyah, that's the son, Yazid, he's the son of Muawiyah who was in power unjustly and he was unfit for the command. So there were many power struggles. Faqal. He said, "Utruhu li Abi Abdir Rahman wisada." Throw a pillow to Abu Abdir Rahman. Fakal. So he responded, "Inni lam atika li ajlisa." I didn't come to you to sit. Ataytu kali o haditha ka haditha. حديثا سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقوله I came to tell you a hadith that I heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم saying سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول I heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم saying من خلع يدا من طاعة Anyone who withdraws a hand from obedience, that is, from the allegiance to the caliph. 
لقي الله يوم القيامة لا حجة له. He shall meet the judgment of Allah on Resurrection Day without evidence. Anyone who withdraws a hand from the obedience, meaning he withdraws his allegiance to the caliph, he shall encounter the judgment of Allah on Resurrection Day without evidence. وَمَنْ مَاتَ وَلَيْسَ فِي عُنُقِهِ بَيْعَهِ And anyone who died without having pledged allegiance to the caliph. مَاتَ مِيتَةً جَاهِلِيَّةً Then he died an era of ignorance, death. Now this doesn't mean that, like for ourselves, for example, there's no caliph for us to pay allegiance to. So this doesn't apply to people like ourselves. This applies to people who, for example, paid allegiance to the caliph and then they withdrew their allegiance and then they never came back. Then they died, then they would die an era of ignorance, death. And very important evidence here, لَقِيَ اللَّهَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ لَا حُجَّةَ لَهِ This one who withdrew his allegiance. He shall encounter the judgment of Allah on Resurrection Day without any evidence. This means that there's no evidence for withdrawing one's allegiance to the Caliph. That's a strong refutation for the people who said, no, no matter who said it, doesn't matter who said it. No, it doesn't matter who anyone who said it, because this is what the Prophet said. That's a strong evidence against anyone, whomsoever, who said that Muawiyah made a valid legal ijtihad to fight Imam Ali, who was the just caliph in their own confession. La hujjata lah, because valid legal ijtihad has evidence. You don't make ijtihad from nowhere. If you make ijtihad, it's because what? There is no explicit ayah in the Qur'an. There is no explicit authentic hadith. So then, based on the evidence that is available, you make ijtihad from the evidence, not from imagination. So if this is a matter that has no evidence to withdraw allegiance to the caliph, has no evidence, then there's no way to say that there was a valid ijtihad behind such behavior. So someone will say, ah, but Fulan said, and Fulan said, and Fulan said. So like we will see, inshallah ta'ala, that's the difference between someone who's precise and someone who's not. Like Imam Ali himself said, the truth is not known by the men. The men are known by the truth. That's the difference between a muhaqqiq, someone who's precise, someone who's accurate, and someone who's less than that. That not by virtue of the hadith, not by virtue of the evidence, but by virtue of who said it, who said something. وَرَوَى ابْنُ حِبَّانَ فِي صَحِيحِهِ عَنْ عَرْفَجَةِ الْأَشْجَعِي and Ibn Hibban narrated in his authentic book from the route of Arfajah al Ashja'i, Annahu Qal, that he said, Samir to Rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Sayakunu ba'di hanatun wa hanat, there shall be after me very heinous. Things. So, whomever you saw departing the main body of Muslims, أو يريد أن يفرق بين أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم, or he wants to break up. The nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa amruhum jami' and they are mobilized 
فَقُتُلُوهُ كَائِنَ مَنْ كَانْ Then fight him, whomever he may be. فَإِنَّ يَدَ اللَّهِ مَعَ الْجَمَاعَةِ For indeed, the support of Allah is with the main body of Muslims. وَإِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ مَعَ مَنْ فَارَقَ الْجَمَاعَةِ And indeed, the devil is with who departs the main body of Muslims. يَرُ تَقِيلْ that part I don't know how to explain it. وَعَنِ الْبَرَاءِ ibn عَازِبِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهِ And it was reported from Al-Bara' ibn Azib, may Allah accept from him. أَنَّهُ قَالْ That he said, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ The Messenger of Allah صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ said, أَلَسْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ أَنِّي أَوْلَى بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ do you all not know that I am more entitled to the believers than their selves? Kalu bala. They said indeed. Kala alastum ta'lamuna anni awla bi kulli mu'minin min nafsi. He said, Do you not know that? I am more deserving of every believer. I am more entitled to every believer than he is to himself. Yani, the believer, for example, he will defend the Messenger of Allah with his own life. That's how he, the Prophet is more deserving of every believer. He's more entitled to every believer than the believer is to himself. Kalu bala, they said, indeed. Kala fa'akhada bi yadi ali. He said, so the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he took Ali's hand, faqal, and then he said, Man kuntu mawlah, fa'aliyum mawlah. Anyone whom I support, Ali supports. Ali is his supporter. Anyone whom I am his supporter, then Ali is his supporter. Allahumma wali man walah. Oh Allah, support whoever supports Ali. وَعَادِ مَنْ عَادَاهِ And take as an enemy, whoever takes him as an enemy. اللَّهُمَّ إِنَّا نُوَالِي عَلِيَّا Is that strong proof there? وَعَادِ مَنْ عَادَاهِ Take as an enemy, whoever takes him as an enemy. So how would fighting Imam Ali be justified? Unless someone's going to say, well, this hadith doesn't apply to fighting Ali with an army. So the people who are mistaken here, there's a big chunk of proofs that uh, they don't teach to the people. Those of them who know these proofs, they don't share them with the people. And so lots of them have no idea about the amount of evidence against them in this issue. And the clarity of it. رواه الإمام أحمد بن حنبل في المسند. That was narrated by Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal in the Musnad. الخارجون على الإمام علي بغا. Those who mutinied against Imam Ali, or those who went against Imam Ali, were mutineers. Those who rebelled against Ali, those who were insurgents against Imam Ali were mutineers, Bugah. Bugah, that's the plural of Baghi. Baghi, it means a transgressor. His attribute is Baghi, Al Baghi, transgression. I'm going to translate it as mutiny because of the context of them fighting. Against, yeah, and mobilizing an mobilizing an army to fight against the leader. Uh, that's haram. One person I saw, a desperate person who is very bad, because really he has no proof here, but he doesn't want to shut his mouth. He said, as eh, being a al baghi is not haram." So he just doesn't fear Allah at all. He has no reference for that claim. Not in any dictionary, nor in any book of fiqh. So 
So here the Sheikh wants to discuss the obligation of fighting with Ali. Of fighting with him. The obligation of fighting with Ali. Al-Bugha. Here, this word, Bugha. That's the plural of Bari al Bari. Bari means someone who has Bari al Bari. B A G Y. B A G H Y. Al Bari. Al Bari in the language means transgression. That means to step out of bounds, to be out of line. Al Bari. I'm going to translate it as mutiny in, in accordance with the context of our discussion. Because we're talking about people who mobilized an army to fight the caliph, to overthrow the caliph. And I said, I saw a person talking about this, a desperate person and a very rotten person. Desperate because he doesn't really have any proof. So when presented with all the documents, like we'll see, about those who fought Ali being Bugah, yani you'd expect that if somebody has some Islamic education, he knows Baghi is bad, it's haram. You can't be a Baghi against the caliph. Baghi in any context is bad. In the hadith, the Prophet wasallam said, وَإِذَا حَسَدْتَ فَلَا تَبِغْ لَا تَبْغِي If you are envious of someone, don't, don't have baghi. Don't cross the line because of your envy. That means don't speak about that person. Don't harm that person or his property because you are envious. Don't transgress. Baghi is bad any way you look at it. That person desperate rotten person who doesn't fear for himself he doesn't fear for others he doesn't care about the religion of Allah he just wants to fight the followers of Sheikh Abdullah he said Baghi is not necessarily bad because he had nothing left to say but to just literally defy the truth he has no reference to prove that Baghi is not bad not from a dictionary, nor from a book of fiqh. That's how desperate those people are, very weak. That because he was too arrogant to stop, then he let his tongue say that Baghi was not haram. He should have just stopped. So, Shaykh says, لِيُعْلَمْ أَنَّ الَّذِينَ قَاتَلُوا عَلِيًّا خَرَجُوا عَنْ طَاعَةِ الْإِمَامِ Let it be known that those who fought Ali exited, departed the obedience to the Imam, the leader. Imam means leader. Here means caliph. So that's a, a sin. That's a case. الْخُرُوجُ عَنْ طَاعَةِ الْإِمَامِ you cannot depart the obedience of the caliph. Who, whomever he is. Yani, you can't rebel against the caliph. And he, meaning our sire Ali, he was commanded to fight whoever mutinied against him. Who commanded him? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because uh, these issues of whom Imam Ali fought, they were prophesized. The Prophet Alaihi Wasallam spoke about that before it happened. Many, many years before it happened. The Prophet himself commanded Ali to fight those whom he fought. فَقَدْ رَوَى الْبَزَّارُ وَالطَّبَرَانِيُّ أَنَّهُ قَارْ Al-Bazzar and Al-Tabarani narrated that Ali said 
umirtu biqitalin nakithin wal qasitin wal mariqin I was commanded to fight an nakithin the promise breakers wal qasitin the unjust and al mariqin those who depart the religion and if you've been following in the hadith terminology lessons then you know what it means to say when the companion says we were commanded here he says i was commanded so who's his commander the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam so this is a hadith of the prophet this has the judgment of being a hadith of the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam I was commanded to fight the promise breakers, the unjust, and those who depart the religion. Three groups. قال الحافظ ابن حجر العسقلاني في كتابه التلخيص الحبير. حافظ ابن حجر العسقلاني said in his book التلخيص الحبير. ما نصه quote قوله أي الرافعي. What الرافعي said. ثبت أن أهل الجمل وصفين والنهروان بغاة. It is confirmed that the people of Al Jamal and the people of Sifin and the people of Nahrawan were all mutineers or insurgents. That's what Al Rafi'i said, the Shafi'i. One of the sheikhs of the Shafi'is, Al Rafi'i. What did Ibn Hajar say? Huwa kama qal. It is as he said. He's saying, that's true. What Al Rafi'i said is true. So, what's strange is that some people will bring you some statements from Ibn Hajar al Asqalani saying the opposite of this. So, what do you say? You don't have to defend. Ibn Hajar al Asqalani, may Allah have mercy on him. Either he said this one or he said that one, or if he said both of them, he contradicted himself. This one, though, is compliant. This statement is correct. The other one is not correct. The truth is not known by the men. The men are known by the truth. May Allah make us among those who are known by the truth to be truthful. Ameen. Then Ibn Hajar said, وَيَدُلُّ عَلَيْهِ حَدِيثُ حَدِيثُ عَلِي And what proves that? What proves that this statement of Ar-Rafi'i is a correct statement? Is the hadith of Ali. أُمِرْتُ بِقِتَالِ النَّاكِثِينَ وَالْقَاسِطِينَ وَالْمَارِقِينَ I was commanded to fight the promise breakers, the unjust, and those who depart the religion. That's a strong proof there. If the Prophet commanded him to fight those three groups because Ali fought three groups, that's what the history testifies to. He fought three groups. So if the Prophet ﷺ commanded him to fight them, then what ijtihad could someone make to fight Ali back? Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Yani, even if there was an ijtihad, a valid legal one, it would be shav, yani, it would be an irregular one that's not valid, that's not a it's not permissible to apply it. Because those people are saying Muawiyah he made an ijtihad and he got reward for it too. How's there a reward in that? رواه النسائي في الخصائص النسائي narrated this hadith in الخصائص والبزار والبزار والطبراني and البزار and الطبراني narrated this then Ibn Hajar explains والناكثين أهل الجمل the promise breakers are the people of الجمل those are the people who are in البصرة that includes طلحة and as Zubair and Aisha. Although Aisha didn't go out to fight, but she was in their party. She was in their camp. So that was haram. 
So those people are saying, you can't say that's haram, that's talha. Yani, the rules are the rules. But he repented. We'll see all those hadiths, inshallah. As Zubair and Talha and Aisha, they all repented. Those people say, look at those people saying that they repented from a sin. And they rally their people. And those people said Aisha and Talha and Zubair repented from a sin. They committed a sin. Look at them saying they committed a sin. That's what they say. And then, whoever hates us, they say, yeah, look at those guys. Uh, but they have no answer for the proofs. So, Ibn Hajar explains, The, the promise breakers are the people of Al-Jamal, those who are in Al-Basra. Because they withdrew their allegiance. Well, Qasitin and the unjust, the unjust altogether, Al Qasitin, the violators, Ahlu Sham, those were the people of the Levant, that's Muawiyah and his party. Al Qasitin, the unjust. So that's what the hadith says. What those people would say. They would say, look at those saying that Muawiyah was unjust. Who do they think they are? That's how they argue this issue. لِأَنَّهُمْ جَارُوا عَنِ الْحَقِّ Because they were unjust. They went out of, they went against the truth. فِي عَدَمِ مُبَايَعَتِهِ By refusing to pay allegiance altogether. And the scholars have documented that when the Muslims pay allegiance to an imam, then that goes through all the Muslims. It will then apply to all the Muslims. And then anyone who stands against that will be fought. So they were the unjust ones. And those who go out of, go out of the religion, Ahlun Nahrawan, the people of Nahrawan, those were the Khawarij. Some of them were Muslims and some of them weren't. لِثُبُوتِ الْخَبَرِ الصَّحِيحِ فِيهِمْ They were called the Mariqeen because of another hadith, which is an authentic hadith about them. أَنَّهُمْ يَمْرُقُونَ مِنَ الدِّينِ كَمَا يَمْرُقُ السَّهْمُ مِنَ الرَّمِيَّةِ Which is that they exit the religion as an arrow exits the target a strongly shot arrow goes right through the animal and it goes through it so hard and fast that not even a trace of blood or fat sticks to the arrow intaha end quote assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah I need you to go back to uh, explain to me uh, mm. Zubair, Taha, and Aisha. May Allah be pleased them all. Yeah. Uh, what did you say about them? Uh, yes. Here in the hadith, Ali said, Umirtu bi qitali nakithina wal qasitina wal mariqeen. I was commanded to fight. And nakithin, the promise breakers. And al qasitin the unjust ones, the violators. And al mariqin those who depart the religion. So, al nakithin those are the people of Al-Basra that Ali fought in the Battle of Al-Jamal. So, who was there? Talha and Az-Zubayr and Aisha. So that means Ali had to fight them, but Aisha didn't go to fight. She went to reconcile, but she was not supposed to be, she was not allowed to be on the side of those who are not allowed to be doing what they were doing. So that's haram. You know how, for example, it's haram to entertain major sinners to be uh, like, for example, uh, if your presence encourages people who are sinning, it's haram for you to be present. So that's what her case was. Not that she went to fight. Uh, so, so that's their case. And they repented, as we'll see. 
because some people are going to say, well, they said that Talha and Zubair and Aisha were sinners. Okay, so how do you explain their repent? Yeah, how do you explain this hadith? What does it mean that he had to fight the Naki theme, the promise breakers, those who withdrew their allegiance? Ibn Hajar said, a Naki theme are Ahlul Jamal, the people of Al Jamal, the people of Basra. The promise breakers, that means they withdrew their allegiance. He said, Because they they broke their allegiance. That's haram. So, it's like these people don't want to put 2 plus 2 together. In their minds, this is because we want to uphold the honor of the Sahaba. But they're not upholding the honor of the religion in the first place because they're contradicting. They're making the religion contradictory. They're ignoring. You can't ignore the points. You can't like just not put the facts together. That's not the way of the Muslims. That's not the way of the Prophet And we're not saying that they did a sin because we hate them or we or we want to talk bad about them. We're just stating the fact of the matter. This was haram for them, the Naki theme, for them to break their allegiance. That's haram. And they repented. We're going to see the hadiths about that if Allah gives us the life and the consistency. May Allah have mercy on them and, and accept from them. I mean. وَرَوَى الْبَيْهَقِيُّ فِي كِتَابِ الْإِعْتِقَادِ بِإِسْنَادِهِ الْمُتَّصِلِ إِلَى مُحَمَّدِ بْنِ إِسْحَاقِ And Al-Bayhaqi, he narrated in the book Al-I'tiqad with his chain of narration his continuous chain back to Muhammad ibn Ishaq وَهُوَ ibn خُزَيْمَ Muhammad ibn Ishaq is ibn Khuzayma. ibn Khuzayma has the third most authentic hadith book after Bukhari and Muslim his book is called Sahih ibn Khuzayma قال, he said, وكل من نازع أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب في إمارته فهو باغ. Everyone, he didn't say some of them, he didn't say everybody but those who were companions. He said all of them, everyone who opposed the Prince of Believers, Ali ibn Abi Talib. In his rulership is a mutineer. Ala hada ahitu mashayikhana. What did Ibn Khuzayma say? He said, This is what this is the position that I knew our sheikhs to have. Wabihi call up nu Idris, and that's what Ibn Idris said, Yani Shafi'i meaning a shafii rahimahullah may allah have mercy on him intaha end quote so those people who are mistaken in this issue they would have you to believe that nobody is saying what we're saying except shaykh abdullah and they're going to give you quotes that they have yani you should know that there are scholars of ahlu sunnah who said the wrong thing here that's why those people who quote those scholars who said the wrong thing, they don't quote these proofs that I'm reading to you. Actually, from what I've seen, they don't quote any proofs. They quote uh, quotes of scholars. So they would quote some scholars saying, what happened between the companions? We don't talk about it. Or... Uh, they all made ijtihad and they all have their reward or things like this so they have i don't know how many such quotes they have let's say they have a whole bunch of them yeah, but if it's not if that doesn't comply with the religious evidence actually then you shouldn't take it you should take whatever came in the quran and what came in the sunnah and there's so many things that they are ignoring like the fact that ali Yani, it's like it didn't cross their minds that had Ali had to kill Muawiyah, he would have done so. If he had to kill him, he would have done so. How do we know? Because 
Ali had an army of Muslims. And Muawiyah had an army of Muslims. This is a, a civil war between Muslims. Ali commanded his army to fight those Muslims, to kill them if need be, which they were doing. Those were Muslims killing each other. So they would kill everybody, but then if it came down to Muawiyah, he would say, okay, stop. Here's Muawiyah, we're not going to kill this one, though. All the other ones who died, that's okay. If he needed to, he would have killed Muawiyah himself. They didn't think this far. وَفِي كِتَابِ أَحْكَامِ الْقُرْآنِ لِلْجَصَّاسِ الْحَنَفِي تَحْتَ بَابِ قِتَالِ أَهْلِ الْبَغِي مَا نَصُّهُ And in the book, The Rules of the Qur'an, أَحْكَامُ الْقُرْآنِ by Al-Jassas the Hanafi under the chapter of Fighting the People of Mutiny Quote وأيضا قاتل علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله عنه الفئة الباغية بالسيف He says also furthermore meaning he was saying something before this furthermore علي بن أبي طالب may Allah accept from him fought the transgressing group the violating group Al-Fi'a al This name came from the hadith of the Prophet Alayhi salatu wasalam Which is going to come in a minute Al-Fi'a al The violating group The unjust group By the sword And he raised arms against them That means he shed their blood Imam Ali shed their blood Muslims وَمَعَهُ مِنْ قُبَرَاءِ الصَّحَابَةِ وَأَهْلِ بَدْرٍ مَنْ قَدْ عُلِمَ مَكَانُهُمْ And on Ali's side of elite companions and people who, are part who participated in the Battle of Badr are those whose status is known. وَكَانَ مُحِقًّا فِي قِتَالِهِ And Ali was rightful in his fighting. That those people would say, and Muawiyah was too. So that's their mistake. They say, yeah, Ali was rightful, but Muawiyah was too. Doesn't make any sense. They're saying it was permissible for those, both of them, to kill each other. I, as if they didn't think about this. It was lawful for them, they're saying, it was lawful for... Those Muslims to kill each other. All of what they were all doing was permissible. That's what they're saying. وَكَانَ مُحِقًّا فِي قِتَالِهِ لَهُمْ لَمْ يُخَالِفْ فِيهِ أَحَدٌ إِلَّا الْفِئَةُ الْبَاغِيَةِ الَّتِي قَابَلَتْهُ وَأَتْبَعُهَا Ali was entitled to engage in this warfare. And no one opposed him in that, not a single one opposed him in that, except the transgressing group itself. That group which stood against him, that group and its followers. وَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ لِعَمَّارِ And the Prophet وسلم, said to Ammar, تَقُتُلُكَ الْفِئَةُ الْبَاغِيَةِ the violating group shall kill you. Ammar. He told Ammar that when he was a young man. That hadith was spread. This is an acceptable report about Ammar being killed by the transgressing group. It is a successively mass narrated report. That means it is definitely authentic. 100% authentic. All the Sahaba knew this. While the Prophet was alive. And they were just waiting for it to happen. Al-Jassas continues to say, this Hanafi. He's a mujtahid in the Hanafi school. He continued to say, even Muawiyah was not able to deny this hadith. لَمَّا قَالَ لَهُ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بْنُ عُمَرِ Maybe that's supposed to be Amr. 
when Abdullah mentioned it to him. فقال, so what did Muawiyah say when the hadith was mentioned to him? He didn't say, this hadith is false. Rather, he misinterpreted the hadith that he knew. He, knew, he, knew, he knows the right interpretation for the hadith. But he had an agenda. So he, he wasn't silent and he didn't deny the hadith. Neither did he deny the hadith, nor was he silent, and then just continued to do what he wanted to do. Rather, he gave an interpretation, a misinterpretation. Fakal, he said, Innama qatalahu man ja'a bihi fatarahahu bayna asinnatina. Merely, his killers, or his killer, is the one who threw him between our spears. Ammar's killers, or Ammar's killer is the one who threw him between our spears. And Ammar was an old man by this time. We said he was an old man, he's shaking. You know, maybe sometimes man gets old, so he has a uh, shaking. He was an old man, he went to war here, he fought with Ali in this war. رواه أهل الكوفة وأهل البصرة وأهل الحجاز وأهل الشام. This was reported by the people of Al Kufa and the people of Al Basra and the people of Al Hijaz and the people of the Levant. يعني this hadith is definitely authentic hadith. وهو علم من علام النبوة. And this is a sign of prophethood. لِأَنَّهُ خَبَرٌ عَنْ غَيْبٍ Because it is the news about the unseen, meaning because it was a prophecy that came true years later. لَا يُعْلَمُ إِلَّا مِنْ جِهَةِ عَلَّامِ الْغُيُوبِ It is not known except by getting revelation from the knower of the unseen. انتهى, that's the end of what Al-Jassas said. Uh, why is that a misinterpretation, by the way? It's going to come, but I'll tell you now, since it's not right here. Ali answered that when Muawiyah's explanation of the hadith reached Ali, that Muawiyah said, the one who killed him is the one who threw him between our spears. Then Ali said, then Prophet Muhammad killed his uncle Hamza. What does that mean? It means didn't Hamza fight on Prophet Muhammad's side? Alayhi salatu was salam, yes. And wasn't he killed in battle? He fell in battle, yes. So if the one who killed Ammar was the one on whose side Ammar was fighting, then the one who killed Hamza was the one on whose side Hamza was fighting, then that would mean that the Prophet killed his own uncle. And the scholar said, this answer of Ali has no response. They said, that's a decisive answer that, that can not be responded to. Then Al-Jassas said, فَإِنْ قِيلْ If it were said, قَدْ جَلَسَ عَنْ عَلِيٍّ جَمَعَةٌ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ النَّبِيِّ صلى الله عليه وسلم A number, a group of companions did not participate in the fight with Ali. مِنْهُمْ سَعَدٌ وَمُحَمَّدُ بْنُ مَسْلَمَةٌ وَأُسَامَةُ بْنُ زَيْدٍ وَابْنُ عُمَرٍ Such as Sa'ad and Muhammad ibn Maslamah and Usama ibn Zayd and ibn Umar So, what's the point of someone who's saying that? Saying, wasn't necessarily obligatory to fight with Ali. So Al-Jassas says, قيل له, It would be said to him, لم يقردوا عنه لأنهم لم يروا قتال الفئة الباغية They did not refrain from fighting with Ali because they did not 
see that fighting the transgressing group was legitimate. That's not why they didn't fight. وَجَائِزٌ أَنْ يَكُونَ قُعُودُهُمْ عَنْهُ لِأَنَّهُمْ رَأَوُوا الْإِمَامَ مُكْتَفِيًا بِمَنْ مَعَهُ It is possible or valid that they did not participate in the fight with Ali because they saw that the Imam had a sufficient number of fighters with him. مُسْتَغْنِيًا عَنْهُمْ بِأَصْحَابِهِ And that he didn't need them. He had enough fighters with him so that they didn't need to participate in the fight. فَاسْتَجَازُوا So, based on that, they legitimized falling back from the battle, not fighting, not participating. لِذَلِكَ uh, yeah. فَاسْتَجَازُوا الْقُعُودَ عَنْهُ لِذَلِكَ So for that reason, they legitimized falling back from the fight. Yani not participating in the first place. أَلَا تَرَى أَنَّهُمْ قَدْ قَعَدُوا عَنْ قِتَالِ الْخَوَارِجِ Don't you see that they also refrain from fighting the khawarij? لَا عَلَى أَنَّهُمْ لَمْ يَرَوْ قِتَالَهُمْ وَاجِبًا It's not because they didn't see that fighting the khawarij was obligatory. لَكِنَّهُ لَمَّا وَجَدُوا مَنْ كَفَاهُمْ قَتْلَ الْخَوَارِجِ Rather, it's that once they found that they had enough fighters to fight the Khawarij, إِسْتَغْنَوْ عَنْ مُبَاشَرَةِ قِتَالِهِمْ They saw that there was not a need for them to engage in the battle. فَإِنْ اِحْتَجُّوا بِمَا رُوِيَ عَنِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ So, if they argue, yani whoever wants to discredit this fighting, like Ibn Taymiyyah, if they argue by using as an evidence what was reported from the Prophet ﷺ, that he said, سَتَكُونُ فِتْنَةً There shall be a tribulation. الْقَائِمُ فِيهَا خَيْرٌ مِّنَ الْمَاشِي The one who stands still in that tribulation is better than the one who walks forward. وَالْقَاعِدُ فِيهَا خَيْرٌ مِّنَ الْقَائِمِ And the one who sits down is better than the one who stands up. قِيلَ لَا Then it would be said to this one who's trying to discredit the obligation of fighting with Ali. إِنَّمَا أَرَادَ بِهِ الْفِتْنَةَ الَّتِي يَقُتَتِلُ النَّاسُ فِيهَا عَلَى طَلَبِ الدُّنْيَا All this hadith refers to is the sedition in which the people are fighting over the dunya and they're just fighting over bigotry and uh, من غير قتال مع إمام تجب طاعته Without fighting with an imam that's obligatory to obey. An imam who is obligatory to obey. Because the belief of the Muslims is that, in the proper fiqh, the proper rules is that when the caliph rallies the Muslims to fight, they should obey him. When he says, oh Muslims, we need to go out to fight, then the Muslims... Then they rally around their imam and they go out to fight with him. So Al Jassas is saying, This hadith is not about that. But when it is confirmed that one when one of the two parties is a transgressing one. And the other is a just one with the Imam. فَإِنَّ قِتَالَ الْبَاغِيَةِ وَاجِبٌ مَعَ الْإِمَامِ Then fighting the transgressing group would be obligatory with the Imam. وَمَعَ مَنْ قَاتَلَهُمْ مُحْتَسِبًا فِي قِتَالِهِمْ That part I'm not sure how to explain that. فَإِنْ قَالُوا But if those people were to argue, 
قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لأسامة بن زيد The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said to أسامة بن زيد قتلته وهو قد قال لا إله إلا الله إنما يردد ذلك مرارا You killed him and he said لا إله إلا الله You killed him and he said لا إله إلا الله He was repeating it فَوَجَبَ أَلَّا يُقَاتَلَ مَنْ قَالَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَا يُقْتَلُ So it's obligatory to not fight anyone who says لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ nor to kill him, nor should he be killed. قِيلَ لَا It would be said to the one who uses this as an argument. لِأَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُقَاتَلُونَ وَهُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ This is because they were being fought as pagans. حتى يقولوا لا إله إلا الله until or unless they say لا إله إلا الله كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم like the prophet said صلى الله عليه وسلم أمرت أن أقاتل الناس حتى يقولوا لا إله إلا الله I was commanded to fight the people until they say لا إله إلا الله فَإِذَا قَالُوهَا عَصَمُوا مِنِّي دِمَاءَهُمْ وَأَمْوَالَهُمْ إِلَّا بِحَقِّهَا And when they say it, then they have protected from me their blood and their properties, except by right. Yani unless there's another reason, but not because of being kuffar. فَكَانُوا إِذَا أَعْطَوْا كَلِمَةَ التَّوْحِيدِ أَجَابُوا إِلَى مَا دُعُوا إِلَيْهِ مِنْ خَلْعِ الْأَصْنَامِ وَعَتِقَادِ التَّوْحِيدِ So that was the hadith. Al-Jassas says, If those who are being fought gave the word of monotheism and they responded to what they were invited to, of withdrawing worship of idols, refraining from the, yani, abandoning the worship of idols, and believing in monotheism, then that's when you don't kill them. And, and just for clarity here, we're talking, yani, it's, uh, some people who believe in Western propaganda, they will, they take this way out of context. So this, no, none of what we're talking about means that we're just going to go around killing people because they're not Muslims. So, let that be clear. وَنَظِيرُ ذَلِكَ أَنْ يَرْجِعَ الْبُغَاتُ إِلَى الْحَقِّ And what's like that is for the mutineers to return to the truth. فَيَزُولُ عَنْهُمُ الْقِتَالِ So then, fighting them will be stopped. لِأَنَّهُمْ إِنَّمَا يُقَاتَلُونَ عَلَىٰ إِقَامَتِهِمْ عَلَىٰ قِتَالِ أَهْلِ الْعَدْلِ Because they are merely fought for their being steadfast to fighting the people of justice. فَمَتَىٰ كَفُّوا عَنِ الْقِتَالِ So whenever they stop fighting, تُرِكَ قِتَالُهُمْ Then fighting them will be stopped. كَمَا يُقَاتَلُوا الْمُشْرِكُونَ Islam, Just like the pagans will be fought over displaying Islam. So, whenever they display it, then the fighting against them stops. Don't you see that the highway robbers are fought? وَيُقُتَلُونَ and they are killed ma'aqulihim la ilaha illallah despite that they say la ilaha illallah meaning amongst the known religious rules is that one of the duties of the caliph is to fight highway robbers meaning that even in the muslim society there would be people who they stay by the roads and they hide behind the bushes and the boulders muslims and they wait for the caravans to pass and then they hop out with their weapons to hijack the caravans and to rob the people. And they band together. They would be a band, yani a group who does that. So one of the rules, one of the uh, functions of the caliph is to fight those people. So sometimes what do they do? They would put up a resistance. 
So the caliph has to fight them even if that leads to killing them. Although they are Muslims who say, La ilaha illallah. Subhanallah, have you ever saw like some of the talk of some of those people who hate the Shaykh and the Shaykh's Jama'ah? They say, Abdullah Al Harari, he said in his book, Sarih al Bayan, such and such about the, those Sahaba. But they will not cite a single proof that the Shaykh gave. Once I saw a person, he was saying this talk. Abdullah Al Harari. In his book, in this book of his, in this book of his, in this book of his, he was, he said those companions were such and such. Yeah, and he's making it out to be like the sheikh is just some heinous villain who was uh, defaming the sahaba. So I said to him, can you share with us any of the proofs that the sheikh used? So that person did not answer that. He didn't respond, not a single word. Because it's not really his intention to uphold the truth. It's just his intention to defame, to defame the sheikh and the sheikh's followers.